Welcome to this installment of Progress Not Perfection. I'm Dan Wilcox. I'm excited to show you a little bit new uh, camera setup here in the studio. Um, we're obviously doing a split screen. Um, this is that new to me easel that I picked up from a new friend I met on Facebook Marketplace. And today for our maiden voyage on uh, progress not perfection of dual screen, I thought we would do a nice rendition of uh, Purple Splendor. That was one Bob did early on. It was back in Season 4, Episode 1, so feel free to check that out on YouTube and uh, would love to see if you use that as a reference and uh, create something similar. Be, be sure to share that with me. I'd love to see you post it in the comments or uh, shoot me an email with that attached. I would just love to check out what you're working on. And trying to make some improvements, so I've got one camera on my right one over on my left. Because I'm right-handed, I understand I'd prefer the camera to be on my right. It's easier for me to look that way and talk to you, but um, I've already got the canvas ready with uh, liquid white, so just need to mix up a color and get after it. So appreciate your feedback and trying to make improvements all the time. I have taped some of our uh, utensils on the shinier bits, so other than the metal out at the edge, you won't get those crazy glary flashes. Not many colors required for uh, Purple Splendor. We've got Titanium White, Thalo Blue, Van Dyke Brown, and some Alizarin Crimson. So I'm just going to whoop up a, uh, oh, a nice purple color here. I'm going to take, oh, about three quarters of my Crimson, about half of a squirt of uh, Thalo Blue there, and I'm just going to make up a nice pile of purple. As the name implies, Purple Splendor, we pretty well will use purple all the way through. So I'm going to need a pretty decent pile of that. So if you're working on a clear palette, you could always take a little bit of this, put it over near the side, grab a little white, and see how your purple's coming along. One thing I like working with uh, this freezer paper, I ordered it from a, a restaurant supply uh, online provider. When you smush it out and then scrape it up, you can kind of see what you're getting underneath. So that's a little on the blue side for me. So I'm going to add most of the rest of my crimson to that. That blue is many times stronger than that crimson. And like I said, we need plenty of it. Plenty of it. So we're just going to smush it out, get as much of that off the knife so we can use it as we go. All right. I like to hold a paper towel here at the end of my palette just so I can wipe off any extra I'm carrying along there. But let's just dive in and go. So I'm just going to load up with our 2 inch brush. I mentioned already that I've already applied a thin even coat of liquid white. Great way to always check that is just take the end of one of your fingers and just touch. You should have a pretty decent covering of liquid white there on the end of your finger, but still be able to see the lines of your fingerprint. As long as you can still see the lines, you're good to go. If you don't see the clear lines of your fingerprint, then you've probably got a little too much and just work to take some off. So I'm just going to pick a corner and start with some crisscross strokes. Still kind of on the blue side for what I was looking for, so I'm going to stop, take my knife back out, take the rest of my crimson, and just work that into my color real quick. And if I don't have enough crimson, well, then that's the color it's going to be today. And that's okay. Blue's my favorite color, but purple was a favorite color of a friend of mine who unfortunately was taken from us way too soon through some tragic circumstances. And for those of us that knew him, the first Christmas and holiday season without him here and he was just one of those guys that just mm, brightened the room every time he walked in. One of those people that could just just give you a hug or say a positive word and everything just seemed better. So thinking of my friend Tim, missing him, and also looking forward to teaching this class Got a couple of these coming up in the villages early in January. Today is Friday before Christmas. So Christmas is on Monday. So what does that make today? The 22nd, I guess? 
Yeah, that sounds about right. 22nd, 23rd will be Saturday, 24th will be Sunday, and Monday is the 25th. I know you'll probably see this after Christmas, but that's okay. I hope you found a beautiful church service to go be a part of. I'm excited to pitch in and do my little part to help the five services we'll have going that uh, the church we are very happy and active members of Meadowbrook here in Ocala. A lot of good churches here in the Central Florida area. I hope there's several where you are. And we're just going to dance in that purple sky. This is a cold winter scene. And oh, we'll probably have some water down here, or some shadows in the snow. So let's just put in some color down here. Great way to use up any paint that you have left on your brush. Doesn't really matter what happens down here. It's just going to be some undercolor. Let's step back real quick and see what we got. See if we like it. Yeah, the sky's a little harsh for me on where it transitions from dark to light, so let's just make a quick blending pass. Move a little of this color around a little bit. Be careful if you're mixing. You're blending from any dark areas to light areas because you can really flatten out your color in a hurry. That is not what I want to do. I just want to soften that transition a little bit. So nothing really to it. Just buzz through it. Some crisscross strokes. It'll move some paint around. If you go quick but gentle, you will be able to see where your paint's going. And let's just do some long horizontal strokes. Take out any of those last brush strokes we want to soften. Cool. Easy peasy. Like I said, this is my rendition of Bob's uh, Season 4, Episode 1, Purple Splendor. And I've painted this one, and when we do it in class in the villages, we will probably put... Uh, some distant mountains in here, maybe a little bigger mountain, and then some some trees coming this way, and a cabin. Kind of depends on the mood of class and how things are going along. If things are stepping along quite nicely and people aren't feeling rushed and we're having a good time, then we will do that. Uh, otherwise, we may just jump in right uh, like I'm about to. Um, let's get a little bit of our titanium white and just put that down so we can soften this color if need be. Used up my paper towel and didn't replace it so let's just do that. So I've just got a small fan brush here and I'm just going to grab a little bit of our purple color take a little bit of white just so I can make more of a, a lavender. Do a lighter color when it's further away and that will just help us with that illusion of distance there. We'll get darker as we get closer. So let's just see what happens. So let's put our distant trees. Oh, let's kind of start them maybe, start them maybe right about here. You'll almost always find that one side of the fan brush will behave better for you. Let's see what happens. This one's had a pretty good rest since used in its last class and cleaning, so it's a little stiff. So I'm just kind of getting it broken back open and ready to, to be in prime time. Turn sideways if you need to, kind of put some shorter trees off. No sliding here. These are kind of, these are tap and crash trees. Oh, and we'll just have those goes off that kind of way. Let's pick up another load of paint here. And let's just, uh, let's darken those a little bit because we're going to, I'm going to uh, kind of tap out the bottoms of those and set them back a little bit. So having them a little bit darker than I started there is going to be okay. Going to be okay. And so tap and crash. So tap and kind of crash down. So let's see. I think you can see that pretty well. Brush to canvas. And that's the objective. I know some of you will miss seeing my beautiful mug on, on camera as much, but uh, please just 
be okay with that. You know, I'm going to switch to a bigger fan brush. This is a lovely one, but um, I just want this to move along. And some of these trees, I want them to get quite a bit bigger over here, so that'll just help me out. So I've just switched to a number number six fan brush. Number six. I'm going to use up that white that I pulled in there. So let's just get a nice load of paint. And let's see which side of this fan brush wants to behave the best. Oh, there's the one. There's the one that wants to do, wants to behave and help us out a little bit. So let's just to put a little dark in there. Get the right amount of paint in there, and it's going to really pull pull the end of that brush together for you. Let's see if I can hold that at an angle so you can see that it'll really pull them together, almost like a knife edge, really. And then just gently, gently, gently. Tap and crash, tap and crash. Let these heights vary. That'll really help it look like a natural forest that's getting closer, closer, closer to us. And who knows, maybe it starts getting smaller. Maybe we're at the intersection of, a, of something here. Who knows, who knows. Don't know that we really care. And we're going to put some big old trees in front of these. I'm not too worried about these over here. Thinking we will do the cabin. Don't put cabins in all of these, but Bob's rendition at number season four, episode one, certainly has the cabin in it, and I, I kind of feel like painting that. So let's do that. All right, well, those trees will do for now. So I'm just going to take a clean one inch brush and just tap. Now I'm going fast, but I'm not just going randomly. And I'm going different places because I don't want to just saw in a straight bottom of this tree line. I just am softening out the bottom, making some mist. That'll help us with that illusion of, of distance. See how it does that? I hope you can see that. I'll check that on the replay of the video. But it just softens that, makes it look like mist. Kind of determine how tall do you want these trees to wind up. And there you go. If you picked up a little bit of paint, and that's fine. And ever so gently, ever so gently, ever so gently, just pull up, pull up, just pull up. Just really to the tops of the trees is where I'm coming off there. So don't get so crazy and pull that up into your sky. And if you get any pulled down there, you can just blend it if you want. We're going to come through and set kind of our valley floor here and determine how that lays in just a second. Well, we could go ahead and do that now. Let me put my mitts on a uh, another number three fan brush real quick. I'll be right back. There we go. So let's put some snow way, 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 way off in the distance. We'll just kind of start setting our our valley feel, and then we'll bring in some closer trees. So let's just decide where we want some snow. And don't, don't worry about this. Just kind of start going. You'll start feeling what the, the lay of the land wants to be. I like to leave these gaps in here because we'll come back and put a little, a little shadow in there in a little while. But if you leave some gaps there, look at that, look at that. Look how it just sets the feel of we're on a, on a slope kind of coming down and we look like we got a cold winter scene already. We haven't even done that much. Isn't that cool? Now with a gentle, gentle touch, let me use that same fan brush, just wipe out that little bit of extra paint. Super gentle, super gentle. I just want to go over and soften this snow that we put in because it just pulled off little thick in some places and I just want to soften it down, soften it down, soften it down, soften it down, soften it down. Now if you've got, again, got a nice steady hand, I'm going to go to my other fan brush. You could pick up just a whisper, just a whisper of some more of that phthalo blue. Don't use much. Add it to that lighter lavender side of things just to make it a little bluish because sometimes Shadows in snow looking blue. Just help, help, help with that feeling of distance. So don't do much. Super, super gentle. And we'll come back and soften some of this. 
But watch the layer of depth this gives our some of our little hills here. Let's get up near our tree line and pull out a little shadow. Oh, let's get a little more coming this way. That's one of those big reasons I left, 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 left those gaps in the snow runs just to put in some more of, of these. Look at that. Oh, isn't that great? I love it. I do think winter is my favorite thing to paint. I love painting mountains. I like painting water. You know, we live here in central Florida. You'd think I'd want to paint the beach all the time, but not so much. Not so much. All right, good. Well, that worked out nice. Let's go back to our uh, fan brush that has the white on it that I just wiped out, and let's just soften a few of those shadows. Just, just, just ever so gently. Do this with a little variation in pressure in your hand so they don't all get one flat color. There we go. There we go. I'm going to step back and take a look. Ooh, you know what those look like they need just for fun? Let's grab a little bit more white on that brush. So I'm just going straight into some titanium white there. I think you can see that right there. And as they're getting closer to us, I just want to pull up straight up if I can a few places where we might see some more tree trunks. Just a few, not many. Don't overdo. Don't overdo. Things get to feeling good when we're painting this way. and Boy, we can just gobble them up. They just run away and hide on you. Get a few too bright. Just gently, gently, gently lift straight over them. It'll soften them right in there. There we go. See how that just sort of changes the flavor there? If you got a little crazy and came out of the forest a bit, you can always pull some snow down right back over it like, like this. Never making a mistake on here. Never a mistake. Happy accidents and we'll go with whatever happens. All right, let's grab our big fan brush again and let's really load up with some purple and put in a couple of big trees and then we'll pop a cabin in there. That'll be fun, won't it? Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. I've got a bucket of paint thinner here. And let's see if we can get through. We don't have much paint on the canvas yet, so let's see if we can get this to stick okay. If not, I'll add a drop of paint thinner. Never takes much, but as we come over layer over layer over layer of paint, the one on top needs to just be a little thinner so it'll stick for you, that's all. So let's put this tree, oh, let's put make it real tall. We'll just kind of give ourselves a center line to follow. Oh, let's do an up tree. So let's just touch and let these babies bend up. Move to each side. Now this is not coming off my brush super well. So I may stop. Grab that dot of paint thinner. Not much, just a drop on the corner. Just to thin it ever so slightly ever so slightly just so this paint will really come off and this will darken up so let's just gently 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 so if I push too hard it'll just mush it into one flat old color and I don't want that of course I don't want that and just let it get a little wider 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 as we're getting down here towards the what will be the base down here in the snow and let's just leave that tree right there. Maybe it's got some foliage that runs right off the edge of our canvas as, as a friend. And who knows, maybe it's got a little a little grassy kind of stuff that does that. Isn't that cool, doesn't that? that oh, I just love it. Same, same color, just different amount of it. This tree needs a friend, so let's give him a friend. Oh, let's do this one right here. And this can be an up tree also. Up, 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 up. Just as opposed to having this, the heel of my brush pointed down and having those little fuzzies, oh, whatever you want to call them, hanging down. So that's good fun. Now, let's just, just take a touch of color. Just a touch of straight purple. And just touch here and there. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. We just sneak... Sneak some of that in. Just a couple of 
extra tree trunk kind of things or little tree boys or girls hiding off over there. You know what might be here? They might have, might, might, might have some snow on those branches. So let's grab some titanium white. This is that other number three brush that I got. Did some highlights on. I don't want it stark white. I just want it to be a lighter lavender. So let's just go in, do these just ever so gently. Just touch, just touch. Just a little bit, just a little bit. Just here and there. Don't have to do much. Touch gently. I got a few blobs on that first one that I'm going to go touch again. Just, they got a little crazy on me. Just to soften them down a bit. Oh, and let's just put a little bit of snowy highlight. Just letting the brush bend the other way. And maybe we'll do some up snowers there. That's fine. Now we can take our brush and let's set this down in there. Just grab a little bit of the bottom of that. Underneath the tree, pull out a little more, and then it just looks like shadow right there under the tree. And you can really set the, the further lay of the land that way. Cool. So let's leave that be. Now, I don't think I'm going to do a humongous cabin, so let's just put in a cabin here. Now you can do anything that's going to help you get your cabin in there the way you like it. So you could scratch in, maybe you scratch in with a pointier knife where you want the roof to be, and then scratch off all this paint underneath just, just to make the next step easier. Pull off all this paint, you'll be able to get the roof paint to stick real well. Got to do that back eave a little bit in there, get that there. I we'll need a front of this cabin. Now, there's not much paint on here to scrape off, so I don't even know if you'll be able to see that. I don't know that you can see those scratch points, but what I really, the, the biggest thing I've been working on is getting this front point, this little point, let me point with something else, this front point of the roof to be higher than that back point. The rest of the perspective comes quite, quite frankly, quite easily after that if you've got a good roof line. So that's worked for me. Whatever works for you, if you've got a different method, I'd certainly love to hear about it. So feel free to share that in the comments, or if you could do videos, let us know the address. I'd love to check that out, but you can literally just keep that point a little higher, so that front point there. I like to put this roof on thick with snow, like brrr, this has been a cold winter thus far. We are having a little bit chilly days for us here in Central Florida. A lot of travelers. Lots and lots of traveling happening. Interstate looked crazy. Went by it earlier today. We can finish that up as we go. So let's take some of our brown. Just going to smoosh this out. Oh, let's do some straight brown on this back eave here. Oh, maybe we'll have our roof come down to about here today. So let's just get our back eave in there. We'll get the snowy side above that. Pick up a smidge of white. Streaky up that uh, brown color for us. Cut off a little bit of my roof there, because I do want that roof to come down further in the back to go exactly with what I was telling you about. I want this to be a little shorter back here. And we'll, we'll address the bottom of this cabin, do a little cabinectomy here in a minute, so don't worry about that. Just roll with whatever's happening. No worries. Let's lighten that up just a little bit for the front of the cabin. And just get in here and pull down. Why, when Bob tells you on the show, make sound effects, he ain't kidding. It helps so much. I think it just takes your brain out of the equation and just lets it happen. Let the tool do the work for you. 
a couple different ways you can can kind of take a little paint if you want to set kind of a firm post corner sometimes I like to do that get in there I'm just careful not to get up into my snow on the roof you can also use the small edge of your knife if the side this side over here this back corner of the eave has been something that's been challenging for me since I started trying to paint cabins so I'll even do this a few different ways just to get the paint on the canvas Gentle touch here, gentle, gentle, no pressure. And then, you can just straighten it out. Just pull off some paint here, and we'll put some snow around the foot of that in just a minute. Oh, let's get some more snow up there on the edge. We need certainly some snow up on this edge of the, the roof, and I like to leave that thick, buddy. Yes, sir. So we'll knock a few of those points down, make them look like icicles in just a second. Kind of thicken this edge up a bit. Let's get the edge of our snowy roof coming this way. And it doesn't all have to be smooth and perfect. Fight the worry of that. That just is not required at all. I like to put a, a chimney on these cabins. Maybe put a little smoke coming out the top. That's cool. I love doing those, so we'll do that, I think, here in just a second. Let's put a little thicker snow there. See if you just do a gentle tug. Gentle tug. We're going to have some bushes and things come by. Let's see. Boy, that roof is all cattywampus. This is more like a lean-to kind of barn, but that's what we got, so that's what we're going with. Let's put a little door on this. That's just straight brown. Grab a smidge of liquid white on the end of my knife so I can smush that out on my palette. Grab just a little roll. Just touch. Ever so gently touch. Just outlining the door of my cabin there. There we go. Let's put a little bit more brown down that back side of this cabin. I just feel like this would be darker. Just a little darker. Just a little darker. You don't have to stress over your cabin. If you're not worried about it being darker on one side, just go with it. You'll learn. You'll figure out what you like. Well, you know what that feels like it needs right there in that weird tall spot? Let's just put a little window. Maybe we've got a little partial loft going here. Let's just put a little window. Oop. There's a little window. Maybe it's got a little snow on the window and the ledge. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Catching a lot of brown on my tape. Whoops! <laughs> I set myself up a brush beater trash can. I just threw my paper towel in it, so it's going to be full of uh, <laughs> paint thinner here in just a second. That's kind of funny. I hope you do crazy things like that. I'm just trying to put in a little little cross window like it's a little a little window there where this uh, this cabin's kind of a mess so I ain't too worried about that okay that'll do let's grab our uh, script liner brush we'll knock down a few of those uh, icicles we were talking about it's not coming off as easy as you want. Grab yourself a little bitty paint thinner. Little drop, little drop, little drop. Liquid white's already thin. I just wanted to pull my script liner brush to a super fine point for me. So I can just, here and there. Put in a few icicle looking things. Just breaks up the edge, adds another little layer. You don't have to do that. You can if you want to. A little more paint thinner. A little bit of our brown. There's probably some of that white I mixed in to do the, the wood looking part. Oh, let's have a big tall chimney coming out of our little old cabin here. So we'll get that set down in there real good in just a minute. Grab our 
a fan brush that we were doing highlights with. And let's just pull up some snow up to the front of the cap. Now be careful. You could do this either way. You could go towards the cabin or go away from it. I prefer to go towards it in the front so I don't grab this brown and pull it out. Now we will do a path coming out of that cabin, so don't really worry about that. But then grab yourself a good load of paint on that brush and just be ready to come past this baby one time. If you can do it in one time, that is best. Just so you don't drag brown snow everywhere. You could keep pulling up to it if you wanted to, but just come from wherever it's going to come from and just... I got some brown paint. I know I'm pushing it, so I'm just going to go to there. If you can wipe it off on a paper towel, that works. If you need to fully go through the full cleaning procedure, go for it. Do whatever your tools need and whatever's going to give you the results you want. So. Don't ever say, well, Dan said, well, if it's working real good, you can say that. But if it's not, don't, don't tell him I told you. How about that? <laughs> All right, so that's got us the start of a cabin. Now, I think if the lovely Mrs. Wilcox and I lived out here, she would want a fence. I don't know exactly what for, but guess what? If Mrs. Wilcox says she wants a fence, we're going to get a fence. So how about a little fence action off this back of the cabin here? Not sure exactly what we'd be fencing in to keep in or to keep out out here in a vista like this. But once again, I say it does not matter. Oh, why not? Why not have these little fence posts? And guys go right off the uh, canvas there. That's cool, huh? Grab a little liquid white, a little paint thinner. Let's just kiss a little, a little touch, a little touch. Just here and there. Don't worry about doing this perfectly. You just want to put a little snow on them. Okay. Just here and there. There we go. How about, how about we put some smoke out the chimney? So I do have just a whisper of that thinned out lavender color we made. Just so it will not be stark white. It may still look as such, but let's just twist and turn and let this brush play and move all kind of ways as it's just the smoke just going off. Like that. Cool. Isn't that fun? Let's grab a little bit more of this paint, this white paint. We need to set our chimney down like it got snowed at its foot, don't we? There we go. Boy, this cabin has lived a hard life, it looks like. Not too bad, though. Not too bad. I'm digging what's happening. So, what should we put around the front here? Do we want a great big old tree? No, let's not do a big old tree till we get down here towards the front front. So let's just, oh, I know. How about we do some uh, cool bushes? Yeah, there we go. So I'm gonna take a one inch brush. I'm just gonna go through some of my dark. Just need some dark so we can highlight something here. Let's have one, oh, let's just have a big old bush right here. And we'll have a little bit of it higher than the edge of our cabin there, just so it sets our cabin back. And I really just need the dark here, so I got something to put some snow highlights on. And I'm not just going willy-nilly and being all silly about it, because I also want to do one thing before we get too far away. What are we going to use? What are we going to use? Oh, how about we use our little... Uh, Number three fan brush here. I just want to scrub in the idea of a little path that's kind of coming away from the front door there. So we're going to get a little color, just a little color. It's a little brown, that's fine too. You can do this with a knife, you can do this with a 
larger fan brush. You could do this really with anything you wanted. And I'm just going to go back in and soften it. Soften it, soften it, soften it. I put a little snowy highlight on parts of it. Really set that thing down in there. Brr, this is a cold, cold place. Oh, let's put a fence back there. That's where I should put a fence, too. Coming down that other side of the path there, don't you think? This side of the, the cabin, maybe? Let's have it go this way. Coming towards us a bit. We'll make it feel like it's getting bigger, closer to us. Really set in that walkway. How about that? That's kind of neat. And let's do darker here this time. So we'll do post this way. Play with this. Do it the way it's comfortable and works for you. Generally speaking, as you get closer to you in a landscape, you want it to get darker. That will help with that illusion of distance. I like to put a little snow on them, as we did on the other side. Don't have to be perfect with these. Get a lot of paint in this little script liner brush. Just generally follow that shape. Don't want to lose that whole uh, top rail. You just want to highlight it kind of. A little snow on the tops. And now let's pull out their foots a little bit. towards the uh, path there. Make it look like the wind is blown. Maybe they're getting a little shadowy at this time of day. There we go. That's working out okay. All right, let's get some cool highlights on our uh, little up close bushy things here. What do we want to do that? Let's do that with another one inch brush. A little bit of uh, liquid white. I still don't want these to just be stark white, so I'm going to kiss ever so little of that lavender just so we get some color here and just ever so gently. This will make it look like a frosty, frosty, frosty morning, evening, day, whatever we got cooking over here. Let's whiten it up just a little bit so it'll be a little bit brighter here. Oh, doesn't that look cold? Don't cover up all that dark. You need that dark because if we just go light against light there with the white underneath, you won't be able to see it. Almost like some frozen fog hit this. I know that's got a name. I don't remember what it is, but I've, I've heard that before. We don't get much of that here in Central Florida, thankfully, so not often a concern. So now let's just pull out some of this. And I'm just ever so slightly going to grab the bottom again and just kind of go with the lay of the land. Just shaping the land. What is it? Are we sitting on a little bit of a hill here? Oh, you can pull in a little deeper and completely change the feel of that if you want to. Look at that. Isn't that cool? Grab a little more of it if you want some more shadow. That's fine. Change how it feels any way you like. Let's do a little bit of a frozen pond down here and then uh, kind of put the wraps on this one. Where is my dark color fan brush? Cool. So let's just kind of have a, uh, maybe he's got his own little fishing pond here and that's why they need the fence so they don't fall in as they come down here to, to catch fish. We'll kind of have it get a little closer to us going that way. Maybe it gets a little closer to us as it comes this way. Just making those reflections a little longer. Um, let's see, what did I have on this brush? We'll know in just a minute, won't we? Trash can, almost with that paper towel. That one went on the floor, that's okay. Not much of anything. I've wiped that out pretty good. So let's pull down on this just to soften it. So not much pressure, straight down is more my thought here. Just to soften some of this reflection. This will just help it make it look cold and watery. 
Now that's a little too stark for me because we don't have foliage right on top of this cast in a shadow. So let's pull down a little white in there. Just to vary that a bit. Just to vary it. I don't want it all to go away. Not by a long shot. So let's soften that white ever so gently. Ever so gently. And go across. And there, my friends, we have just added a miraculous, beautiful, reflecting pond, water, frozen tributary estuary of some kind. I don't know that it really matters what. So what shall we add so close to the water? How about we get some frozen bushy things and then we uh, take care of the water's edge. So let's just kind of give ourselves some a little bit of foliage, oh, little grassy things working up and down this, the lay of the land here. This is just pushing with the fan brush. This is no magical. I'm pushing a little bit deeper as I'm getting closer to me, coming around this side of our little body of water, just so this color comes off a little bigger and brighter. That's my thought, and we're going to probably pop in a big old tree there. So as I was kind of running out of paint, it's a great time to sneak over to the other side. Play with your fan brush, because it will come off differently, again, from which corner you've got leading. Oh, let's leave that there, and maybe we'll pull that in here in just a second. So what kind of fan brush action can we do real quick here at the edge? Let's pull in a little, before we do highlights, I just want to pull in a little shadowy kind of here and there, just set some of this down in here. Nothing new, we've done all this before. Just where you've got some open space and you want to kind of give it a little layer of set it in there. I like doing that, I think that's a good idea. Let's take our lighter fan brush, yeah this one will work fine. Wipe out that uh, purplish color we picked up because I want this to be a little brighter white. Picking up, I'm still going to have some paint thinner residual left over in there and that's fine. That's fine. It should come off real easy. Just want it nice and smooth on my brush. Picking up a little titanium white. Doesn't have to be super crazy thin, but let's just start way back here and just dance in a few highlights. A little snow on some of these. Vary the pressure in your hand, vary the amount of the brush you're letting hit the canvas. Just so it doesn't look like it's all been chopped in. Just makes it look like nature really did its thing here. Keep those dark areas. Don't you dare kill them all. You'll be upset with yourself. Whew, this is cold looking to me. Yeah, that's okay. A few over here. These just look like they'd be a little lighter, so I'm not putting as much paint on those. Good stuff. Maybe we've got a little bit of a... Uh, shoreline. You know, maybe there's some dirt at the edge of our pond here, so maybe we just need to to pull in a little idea here and there of some shoreline. Of course we'll put some snow on it. I'm glad you asked. Super gentle here. You don't need much color. Just going to give it the idea. Just as you get closer to you, let it get taller. If you got some that would be maybe a little more shadow, you can certainly make that a little darker if you need to. here so it feels like it's getting closer to us. A little darker. Darker before we put the light on it. Let's get a little more white down there. And ever so gently, ever so gently, you just, just, just let it kiss it. 
described this as a butterfly kiss in class the other day. Some people looked at me like I was absolutely nuts. Some people knew exactly what I was talking about. So, depending on which side of the equation you're on there, I hope you know what a butterfly kiss is. That was sure a fun thing to do as kids. And just kind of kissing in some snow. Oops, grabbed a little liquid white there. No problem. We can soften that edge. I'm just going to do that with a little brush and some water line around this edge anyway. Just let it kiss. Just let it graze. So let's grab a little bit of this and here and there. Pull in a little snow right over the edge of that. We want to. We could do those little highlights. I wasn't crazy about the highlights, so we'll just do that. Let's um, let me go with a clean fan brush. We'll just pull in a little white. Not much. Not much. Just the idea. Just to time together. Just tying together the edge. Just tying together the edge. You can pull snow down from above if you want to. You can just soften it like this. There's really no wrong way to do that. Let's take our palette knife. What is this? I'm getting a cramp in my hand. I must be holding too many things. Clean that knife off as good as I can. Grab a little more liquid white. And find a spot to smoosh it out. And let's just grab a little. We're going to add just a little water line. A little frozen feel to the edge of this. This bright white between two darks is the magic. Boy, it just works so well. You could reshape your shoreline if you want to. Any places you need a little more frozen look. If you want a little, little shimmer of something across the water, you can put that there. Oh, you can do so much and just go, go, go. Threatened you with a big tree, so let's make that happen. I'm ready to do a big tree. A couple of them, maybe. A couple, maybe. Now, I never think you'd be able to see all the shorelines, so seldom do I ever, ever do it, so you can. Step back real quick, take a look. Yeah, let's plant a couple trees on this and. Uh, Call this baby done. A twinge more paint thinner just to make sure this big brush is loaded with a nice, smooth, slightly thinner version of the color we've been working with. Oh, and how about we put a big old tree? Yeah, oh yeah, I think we're going to, well, we'll wind up covering a little bit of that and that's going to be okay, but instead of an up tree, how about we do a down tree this time? So we'll just change tree type. So instead of having my brush up, I'm just going to have it this way. Touch with that corner, see what I'm going to get, and then just let more of it touch as I work to the middle and to the side, to the middle and to the side, to the middle, over to the side. Flip over, use that other corner of paint. One thing I fight is this uniformity feel, so I'm cautious to go gentle enough. I can go back and add a little without just flattening out my color, but don't worry about this too much because we're just painting the back of the tree here. We're going to come and put a tree trunk in the middle. Oh, let's pull this one all the way down. It can land right here on our rocky little things that we did. How about that? Yeah, okay. Thank you for voting. And please play along next time. Oh, let's just close out this corner. How about that? This is feeling good. So we're going to put this with some foliage all the way down to the bottom of our canvas. Boy, doesn't that just shove that whole side of that lake back? So now we've got a whole bunch to, to highlight there, don't we? Let's just put in a little bit more on... Maybe, maybe it gets a little wider this way and goes off our canvas that way. 
Oh, like I said, I told you don't worry about it too much, and here I am pedaling with it. So stop. Stop me, stop me, stop me. Oh, well, you know what? Maybe that's a little bit closer, so maybe we could see a little bit of a brown tree trunk just to kind of mix up things here. Not too much. I don't want it to take over. Don't want it to take over. Had plenty of white in there, so it feels like it's uh, uh, nicely snowed in. Just going to pick up a nice smooth load of liquid white to put some highlights on this real quick. Get some good snow on there. Again, I'm going to do this the same way that I put in the dark color there. Flip over, use the other corner when it starts coming off a little slower. Do not cover all the dark. Vary the pressure in your hand. Go back and forth across the center the, where we put in the tree trunk and it'll just make it feel more three-dimensional. Let's grab our one-inch brush, do a few more highlights here with some snow, put a tree on the other side, and we're going to call this one done. Wow, we're at 50 minutes. That's a lot longer than I wanted to do this, but thank you for checking out the maiden voyage here of our bi-camera action for uh, this episode of Progress Not Perfection. There is a beautiful spot right here, isn't there? Got a few scratchies, little twiggy things, a few little spiky things out of there. Who knows? Love that. All right, let's uh, oh, clean up our pile of purple. Just about ran out of paint. I thought it made way too much. And let's tuck in another happy tree over here and call this baby done. I know you'll be seeing this after Christmas, but I hope you've had a beautiful holiday season. Don't get all caught up in the retail aspect of it. Certainly giving and receiving gifts is a lovely thing. Be a gracious receiver of things. Nobody's ever too cool to receive a present. If you don't receive sometimes, then you are the person that is interrupting the giving circle. Because anytime there's a giving, there has to be a receiving. So let's all just remember to, to do, do our part when it's the right time. And be gracious about it either way. Oh, what about this? We'll just close in this side with a little bit of kind of bookend our little on Golden Pond. How about that? Yeah, so there we've got some stuff we'll make some bushy things out of. Let's sneak in a uh, oh, nice, nice wider tree trunk just to pull this tree way, way up here in front. Oh, there, that's the one I wanted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is not the biggest tree in the world, but that's okay. grow up to be a big tree, won't it? There we go. There's that. Where's my white brush? There it is. Let's grab some liquid white. Some titanium white. See if we can really make some beautiful little just little frozen Feeling things here, pick up a little color, knock it off on a paper towel. Leave some of this dark. I know this gets to feeling good. It's easy to just plow it all under. Don't do that. Don't do that. You'll be upset with yourself. Another great little place, scratching a few sticks and twiggy little things. This is just a clean knife. Just scratch right down to the, the canvas itself. All right, let's get our script liner brush. I did put a little bit of red on my palette so I can use red to sign it. Hope you've enjoyed this one. I'd love to see your version of Purple Splendor. It is one of my favorites. Oh, let's do this one. We'll just kind of sneak in a little DW here. really leave 
myself much room on the side there. So there we have it. Thanks again for watching. I hope you have a Merry Christmas or have had a Merry Christmas. Happy New Year 2024. Happy painting. I love you. See ya. And there's a final straight-on shot for you. I hope you can see that okay.